Let me start with prayer as we always do. So here's my prayer, Father God. We just give you glory tonight. We give you praise and honor, speaker. We give you praise and honor, Father God. We exalt and magnify your blessed name. We declare your, your goodness and your mercy, your grace and your favor, Lord God. We love you with all our heart, Lord God, all our soul, all our strength and our mind. Father God, we thank you for uh, what you do and who you are. We thank you, Father God, you do marvelous things in our life, Lord God. You are our source, our refuge, our fortress, our shield. You are the God in whom we trust. So, Lord, we bless your name tonight. Father God, we are magnifying your name tonight. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We welcome you in this place, Lord God. Remove every burden, Lord. Destroy every yoke, Lord God. Let your presence be amongst us in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let us receive this word, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Let it be a word that changes us and rearranges us and lines us up with the perfect plan and will of God for our lives. And for that, we give you praise, honor, and thanks. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And um, I believe I'm calling tonight's word, um, uh, living according to the word. According to the word. I was debating between that and... Um, being a doer of the word, being led by the spirit, it's all that. We're just going to talk the word tonight. That's it. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm just trying to give it a word and that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get started because I got a few scriptures here. I want to start in the book of Galatians 5. I'm going to start on verse, and, uh, verse 16. I'm going to read through uh, to verse 18 and it reads like this. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, uh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, I just want to pick a couple of points out of this verse, these couple of verses that I read that I want to deal with tonight. And one point I want to pick out is right where we got started. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, when he's saying walk in the spirit, well, God says my word is spirit and my word is life. So when you're walking in the spirit, you're simply walking in the word. Oh, it says, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, walking in the spirit as opposed to walking in the flesh. So when you walk in the spirit, you need to have a spirit mindset. Your mind needs to be uh, stayed on things based on God's word, as opposed to a flesh mindset, where your mind is set on things based of the flesh or of this world or whatever. You know, your mind is not set, not based on things of the spirit. So he says, walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it is a walk, your lifestyle, how you live, how you're living. It's how you walk. It's your life. It's your life. It's your life. Praise the Lord. So now what I want to now what I want to also pull out here is I want to pull this out where he says, um, for these are contrary one to the other. They're contrary, they're contradictory. This the lust, the spirit, the flesh, the things of this world, carnality are contrary or against the things of the word of God. So our natural flesh being is actually contrary to God because he says, um, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. We have different thoughts. We have different ways. That's why he has to tell us to walk in the spirit because if he doesn't tell us to walk in the spirit, we simply won't do that. So um, then he drops down here and he says, um, but if you are led by the spirit, led by the word, if you are led by the Holy Spirit, so we, God wants us to walk in a manner where he wants to lead us. He wants to lead us according to what his word has to say. He wants to lead us according to what, uh, you know, his thoughts and his ways are, are, are all about. So God wants to lead us. That's what the Holy Spirit is here for, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us and pray for us. So God wants to lead us, our life, our life, our whole life. He wants our whole life. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to direct you. 
Why does he want so much of us? Is the question. Why does God want to do, why does he want to lead us? Why does he want to guide us? Why does he want to direct us? Why does he want to do all of this? Well, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he says, he says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God wants to give you an expected end. God expects you to end up somewhere. He says the thoughts of peace and not of evil. God has peaceful thoughts for you. Peaceful. God has a place where God wants the, you to end up. You will not end up there on your own. That's why he says walk in the spirit or walk in the word. And, uh, and he said those that are led by the spirit, those that are led by the word, those that are led by the Holy Spirit. Why? He wants to lead you to where he expects you to end up. He doesn't expect you to get there on your own. Wherever God calls you to end up, wherever he calls you to wind up, it's going to be a place of peace. But he knows you can't get there by yourself. So he, gave, so he wants to lead you there. He wants to guide you there. He wants to direct you there. All right. Let's go a little bit further. Amos 3, verse 3. It reads like this. Can two walk together except they be agreed? God wants to lead you. He said, walk in the spirit. He says, those that are led by the spirit. He says, he has an expected end for us. God wants to walk us to this expected end. He wants to walk us there. But he can't walk you there if you don't agree. Because God's not going to come against your will. God's not going to come against what you want. God's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to make you do anything. So he needs your agreement. That's why he says, if you are, uh, that's why I say it's a, it's a spiritual mindset. Your mind has to be set on things of the word. Because this world will seduce us. This world will entice us. This world will try and captivate us. And get us walking contrary to the things that God has. And let me tell you something, baby. The world can't give you the peace like what God can give you. God give you a peace that passes all understanding. <clears throat> he says he has expected end for us. For, uh, uh, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Glory to God. And everybody wants peace. There's no greater, greater gift than the gift of peace. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me go a little bit further. James 1. James 1. Verse 22. It reads like this. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Getting in self-deception. There are too many people who are in self-deception. They think because they come to church, they're doing all right. And they're all right because I'm not saying they're not going to heaven. They're saved. God loves them. God loves all of us. Saved and unsaved. He loves all of us. He loves those that are being led by the Spirit. He loves those that are not being led by the Spirit. He loves you. But he's trying to get you to an expected end. He's trying to get you to a place of peace. That's what he's trying to do. So he says, be uh, doers of the word, not hearers only. People think because they heard the word, that's enough. No, that's not enough to get, with, to get you where God wants to take you. You got to do what you've heard. And, you know, if you go to a service and sit down and say, oh, that was a good word that Pastor Henry preached this morning. And then walk away. And then a half hour later, someone said, what's your pastor preach about this morning? Um, 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 he said something about the spirit. Oh, it was good. It was good. Get the tape. No. What happened? You can't do what you can't remember. You can't do what you don't remember. So, so it's not enough. Just to come and get the word. The word is here to change you. The word is here to rearrange you. The word is here to set you up for a blessing. Glory to God. This world will try and set you up. People will try and set you up. Things will try and set you up. 
But God wants to set you up for the blessing. Glory to God. He wants to set you up to walk in peace. He wants to set you up to walk in an expected end. He wants to set you up to be a, to be blessed and highly favored of the Most High God. It's a set up. Glory to God. But we have to be doers of the word. We have to agree with God. If you don't agree with God, he can't do nothing to help you. Except for his, his grace and his mercy. Because God's not going to force you to do anything. Now he'll try and put these stumbling blocks in your way to get you on the right path. But it's so much easier just to do the word and let God lead you. Let God guide you. Let God direct you. Let God show you. He wants to show you something. He wants to show you something. Now, God has given us, he's given us some basic, no, not basic, let me not use that word. Oh, how wrong that was. God has given us some key elements to life. He's given us key elements to life. He's given us the blood of Jesus. The only way through the, to the Father is through the Son. So he's given us blood. That's blood type G that was spilled in the earth. The son, the, that's, the, that's God's blood that was spilled in the earth to save you. So he gave you what? The blood of Jesus. Then he gave you his word. He gave you the word of God. These are things that you must have. You must have the blood of Jesus. You must have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He gave you his word. You must have the word. For the just shall walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the just of those who are right with God got to live by hearing the word of God and uh, because they're living by faith. So he gave you the uh, um, blood of Jesus. He gave you the word of God. He gave you the Holy Spirit who will bring all things to your remembrance, whatever he said. The Holy Ghost is there to lead you. The Holy Ghost is there to guide you. The Holy Ghost is there to remind you of what God said. He's there to remind you of what God has said. That's what he's there for. Glory to God. But he gave us a fourth item. I'm calling it item. He gave this, this and it's going to hit home for me. But he gave you the blood. He gave you the word. He gave you uh, 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 the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And he gave you a man of God. A pastor. Yeah, he gave you the fivefold ministry gift. He gave you the prophet. He gave you the evangelist. He gave you the apostle. He gave you the pastor, the teacher. He gave you the pastor. But the pastor is married to the church. The pastor is married to the church. He gave you a pastor. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. The Bible says, um, he, uh, he, he, when he led captivity captive, talking about Jesus, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. What captivity did he leave captive? Whatever you're in captivity to, he led captive. If you were in captivity of drugs, he led that captive, glory to God, and gave you a gift. Well, if you were in captivity to uh, uh, alcohol, he led that captive and gave you a gift. Pornography, he led that captive. Uh, Self-centeredness. Uh, whatever it is, whatever it is you're in captivity to, he led that in captivity and gave you a gift. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some uh, 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 evangelists, some teachers, some preachers. Those are gifts that God gave you. And let me tell you something. You need to value the blood of Jesus. You need to value the word of God. You need to value the Holy Spirit. But you also need to value the man of God. And so many people think, well, should he put one pants leg on at a time like I do? No, God has called him to lead you. Jesus put a pants, one pants leg on at a time like you did too when he was here on the earth. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to honor him. Of course, he's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So he gave you a man of God for a reason. He gave you a man of God for a purpose. He gave you a man of God. See, he wants to lead you by his word. First, he had to get save you by the blood of Jesus. Then he wants to lead you by his word. He wants to lead you by his Holy Spirit. But he also wants to lead you by the word of God, by the man of God. The soul is so with the word. Who is that? The man of God. 
These are they by the wayside where the word was sown. But when I've heard the word, Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their heart. People are, you know, we're going through this pandemic and people are watching the, the broadcast. If they want to watch the broadcast, they're listening to the word. If they want to listen to the word, when they want to listen to it, if they feel like listening to it. Let me tell you something. He said the just shall live by faith and you need to live by faith. Glory to God. You need to live by hearing the word. It's a lifestyle. You don't eat every once in a while when you feel like it. I thought I ate last week. I'm not going to eat this week. No. You eat regular. You need to get this word regular. Glory to God. So I want to give you three more scriptures and we're going to be through and we're going to be kind of, we're going to move kind of fast. We're going to move kind of fast because I don't want to hold you. I know you might have a chicken in the oven. And if you do, give me a call because, you know, pastors like chicken. Okay, Second Chronicles 2020. Look at this. Believe it. Uh, okay, so, uh, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in God just establishes you. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. He wants to prosper you through the man of God. That's why the devil wants you to belittle the man of God. I know, I, well, I know I had a pastor, he, he did that. And the pastor, he, he did that. Let me tell you something. God will give you the right pastor. And if you come into World of Faith Christian Ministries, you got the right one. Because I'm going to give you the word. I'm not going to give you no, no cookies and candy. I'll give you some cookies and candy, but you're going to get the word first. I give you some cookies and candy, but you're gonna get the word first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the word because I love you. Because that's what God called me to do, to teach. And I'm gonna stay in my lane, doing what God called me to do. Cause he knows what you need. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so oh, I heard that before. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, are you doing it? Do you do it? Not just a hero. Remember when we talked about that? Two more scriptures. God wants to use the man of God to prosper you. I never forget when I, you know, when I was going to uh, the church that I was raised up in. I'm not raised up in. I wasn't raised up in the church. But when I, I was saved in and got and fed in and got nourished in and got uh, the man of God, I honored that man of God. And I listened. And if you don't honor the man of God, you won't receive from the man of God. But I honored him. And, no, and I was going through bumps in the road just like you're going through bumps in the road. But every bump, I knew I was I was coming to church waiting to get a word about my bump. And let me tell you something. I got a word from the guy. I got a word through the man of God every time. Uh, what I, I got what to do. I heard what to do. I, I got the word from God because it wasn't the man of God. It was the Holy Spirit working through the man of God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord most high God. But I had to position myself to receive. I had to position myself. You know something? Ten years. I might have missed between seven, between Wednesday night Bible study, Friday night Bible study, Saturday morning prayer, Sunday morning service. I might have missed maybe five or six services in ten years. I was serious about my religion. I'm serious about my relationship with God and I was serious about not missing the things of God. And that's what you have to be. Two more scriptures. Second Timothy, 1 Timothy 5.17 1 Timothy 5.17 I'm almost through. 1 Timothy 5.17 No. Where is this? Uh, Let me pull that out. Hold on one second. First uh, Timothy five seventeen, and it reads like this. Watch this. I'm gonna read the King James and Amplify. Watch this real quick. Um, oh, that's Thessalonians. Hold on one second. I don't want Thessalonians. I want Timothy. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. Okay, 1 Timothy 5.17 reads like this. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy double of, of double honor. Double honor. Especially they who labor in the word and in doctrine. They need to honor your man and woman of God. I didn't. Be a, he, not just a hearer, but a doer. 
Now look at this in the Amplified. That the elders who perform the duties of their office well be considered worthy, uh, considered doubly worthy of honor and adequate financial support. God's not trying to get your money. God's trying, God's trying to get his kingdom built up and he's going to take care of you because you obeyed him. Uh, adequate financial support, especially those who labor faithfully in preaching and teaching. Let me tell you something. I've been, I've been tithing since 94, regular, steady, Big, I've been getting big tithes. I taught, you know, taught my 10% in my offerings. When I got a large sum, I gave a large sum. I got $47,000 one time. I gave, you know, that, that giving up that tithe was hard. But I, 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 in fact, I held back for a minute. But them devils and demons let me know I better hurry up and go and tithe. And I'm worried about hitting and tithe because they, they came after me too. And I went and tithe and, and everything calmed down. And as a pastor, the, the people I know that are tithing, are the ones that are doing all right. We have our bumps, but they're doing all right. And those who are not are the ones who are going through financial issues. And I see it all the time. They've seen it for years. But you'll never know unless you become a consistent tither. Be not hearers, but doers. I'm telling you because I love you. Now, I'm going to love you whether you honor your man or God. I'm still going to love you because that's my job. Whether you tithe, I'm still going to love you because that's my job. And those people who know me going to know I'm going to be there for you if you need me. As long as I'm able. <clears throat> as long as I'm able. And that's what any pastor would do. Unless it's just he's got too many sheep, where then he's going to have people underneath him to make sure you're taken care of. But the pastor's job, he's married to the church. The pastor's job is to make sure that you're, that you're taken care of. But you got to honor that man in order to receive. One last scripture. I'll end it right here. I'll end it here. And people of God, you know, I preach some things that are just on my heart. I preach some things that are to them. I have people um, who, they, they, you know, they know I'm a true man of God. They call me when they have an issue. They want me to pray for them. Pray, can you pray for, my, pray for me? Can you pray for my cousin? Can you pray for my nephew? Can you pray for my grandchild? They call me to pray for them. And, get, and I pray for them. And they call me back with good reports, regular. And then I got those. Yeah, I got. I remember one person came to the church, came from a big church, right here and going up toward Hampton on 1941. Came from a big church and came to our church and said, um, after a few weeks, said, man, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much. And it's only a couple of months after that she trying to tell me I don't run the church. Honor your man of God. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm above um, uh, taking it. Uh, I, I can definitely use um, input. I take input. But, you know, you still got to make sure you know your place. Let me end it here. Psalms 105, verse 15. And that'll be my last scripture. Psalms 105, verse 15. It reads like this. Was that right? It might be Psalms. Well, let me see something. Oh, yeah. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. When you talk about a man or woman of God, you put yourself in danger. You put yourself in danger. And the man and woman of God don't even have to know about it. Because the enemy use you to deceive other people. He use you to deceive other people. I have someone say, um, I will not leave my church based on outside influences. What like voices outside, things going on outside. Yeah, that would never make me leave my church. The only way I will leave my church is if I get the voice from God on the inside. That's a wise man. That's a wise man. That's wisdom. People of God, I hope you got something out that word. Uh, I just, I just want to give you what was, what was on my heart for tonight. I love you, and I'm, a, and I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed to teach and preach God's word. You'll watch the broadcast. Watch the last Sunday's broadcast for those who haven't watched it. Watch some other broadcasts for those who have not been watching. 
Y'all come on and hook up, uh, um, subscribe, and do everything you need to do. And come on and get this word. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let me go ahead and pray for those who are not saved. If you're not saved, you know, the most important thing you can do, like I said about the blood of Jesus, you must be born again. So you must believe that Jesus came down here and died for your sins so that you can be right with God. And if you want to do that and be saved and go to heaven, repeat this after me. Say, Father, forgive me for my sins. No, Father, I believe you sent your son. Mute your phone, mute your phone, mute your phone. Father, I believe you sent your son, Jesus, down to earth to die for my sins. I believe on the cross of Calvary, he took my sins and gave me his righteousness and made me righteous in your sight. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for saving me this day in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Celebration time. Celebration time. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So listen, people of God, you need to come on and give into this word. Um, there are several ways you can do that. You can do Cash App. We have a Cash App. That's the dollar sign with the capital W, capital F, capital C, and ministries with a capital M. So let me give it to you again. Uh, dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, ministries with a capital M. As well, you can, um, there's a link below for PayPal. You go into the link below and give on PayPal. People of God, I love you. I thank God for you. Keep your mask on. Keep your social distance. Stay safe. We'll see you on Sunday. Be blessed.